Once again, balance is the name of the game for the Auburn Tigers. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into this special live edition of Locked On Auburn. I'm Zach Blackerby. He is the man with the plan, Montgomery Radio vet, Daryl Daprich, also with Santa Claus, if you're watching on YouTube, the Auburn Tigers take down UNC Asheville 87 to 62 in a game where Auburn was sloppy for a few minutes, Daryl, but overall talent and execution uh, just kind of paved the way for the Tigers. But the big thing here is balance across the box score, across the roster. It's all about balance for this Auburn Tigers team. Absolutely. You know, Auburn was tied 21-21. And then they went into a, they they changed their lineup and put five on the floor that were the same five on the floor against Indiana when Auburn made that run, and they proceeded yeah. to go on a seventeen to three run. So there's a pattern there. I mean, obviously there's a trend. Um, so that happened, and then you, you look at the bench points tonight, Zach. And my calculations, I think before we we came on, I looked. I think Auburn had fifty three bench points out of eighty seven. That's that's incredible. And a lot of those bench points were from that five that's playing together. Auburn's really finding yeah. a second five that's really – he's got some continuity and really flows and plays really well, and that's extremely dangerous for a basketball team. Yeah, I think so. I think so. And I just love Trey Donaldson – coming off the bench and providing a spark. And I'm going to be honest, he's providing more of a spark offensively than I expected him to so far this season. So props to Trey Donaldson for uh, everything that he's done. I thought he was just going to be a setup guy, but he is becoming a true scorer, which is awesome. I think he led him points. Yeah, he led Auburn with 15 points. And then Chad Baker Mazzara, who is just becoming more and more of a complete basketball player every game that goes by, it seems like. He scored 11. Those are the only two Auburn Tigers in double digit figures there but both of these two guys as you mentioned coming off the bench and this is about balance it's about overall depth and that's the that's going to be the i mean we're going to sing that same song a million times this season daryl i think you got to give credit where credit's due and guys like trey donaldson katie johnson chad baker mazara dylan cardwell and cheney johnson could all start at a yep. lot of places okay they just could but they have bought in and have not pouted, not sulked, and have been content to come off the bench and embrace their role. If they didn't, you'd have a problem. They don't. They 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 embrace it, and that's be, when when you get that kind of buy-in, Zach, you can win at a high level. You can compete for championships. So let's give them a lot of credit for not only the way they're playing, but for the attitude to be content coming off the bench and doing whatever it takes to help Auburn win, they are to be commended for that. So let me ask you this. this um, and Clay describes it as that second wave in the live chat here, and, and he's right. That second wave of Auburn players at all are threats to score in different ways and, and in different ways from one another and in different ways from the starting group, which is exciting. It's a lot to defend if you're an opponent of Auburn this season. This works against UNC Asheville. Right, This works against these teams throughout the non-conference that you are just deeper and better and more physically imposing than these teams. Daryl, can they do this consistently in SEC play? I think they can do it more consistently to me means over the course of 15, 16 SEC games, can they do it? 12 or 13, and I think that would be a little bit impossible to sustain, but I think they can do it more often than not, and the reason why I believe that is because they did it against Indiana. Yeah. So, you know, it's one thing to do it against Southeast Louisiana, you know, even Notre Dame, but they did it against Virginia Tech. They did it against Indiana. So there's some teams in the SEC that are comparable to Indiana and Virginia Tech, maybe some mid-teams, but still. So I think – you know, it's, it's a very unsustainable model because it's so, I don't know, uh, just kind of out of character for a, a bas college basketball team to have that second wave. But if you can do it more than you don't do it in SEC play, you're gonna it's going to propel you. And then all you got to do is have a few of those games in a postseason tournament, and you blink and you're in the Elite Eight. 
So, sure. I, you know, that's why it, nothing like that. I mean, we can talk about shooting percentages, rebounding differential, all the different barometers that a basketball team looks at. None of it's sustainable over a whole 18-game SEC ski season. You're going to have, you know, peaks and valleys. But if you can do something more often than not, you have a good chance to win. And I think Auburn's depth, balance, and second wave scoring, that's a great adjective for Clay to use. They co it comes in, in waves. And I don't know, it's interesting to think you can play 11 players and there's not much of a drop-off. Cardwell coming in for when, uh, you know, Broom is struggling is I, I never saw that. I just didn't – if you would have told me that beginning of the year that that was going to be such a key component so far, that Broom some games would struggle and Cardwell would be the difference maker at the five position and give instant offense, I didn't have that answer to the test. And so that's been – these are all bonuses, I think, mm -hmm. basketball team. I, I'm with you. I'm with you. And, and I think Chad Baker Mazzara – is only going to get better over the course of the season. Several people in our live chat talking up CBM, and I'm there with you. I think CBM is just going to become a better player. And, and if he can get that three going a little bit more cool. consistently like he was able to tonight, wow. Daryl, I mean, it changes it changes how you defend not only him when he's on the floor, but everyone else around you. We know he's a rim attacker. He's a high flyer. He's athletic. He starts hitting threes, and guys run out at him. Katie bar the door. He'll go by you. I mean, you know, you'll blink and he'll be gone and dunking on your head. I mean, that's just, if he starts hitting that three, what a weapon. Cause again, they'll have to come out. They'll have to run out on, on him and that's going to be dangerous. If he puts it on the floor. Yeah. Uh, I'm with you. I'm with you. Same with Denver Jones who sure. hit a couple threes, but also had some nice little mid range floaters in the lane. Same thing. He's got such a reputation for hitting threes. If they run out on him and he puts it on the floor and gets that little eight to ten, which that is one of the things about college basketball that has gone the way of, you know, four coins. People just don't aren't content to hit a little mid-range shot anymore or a shot in the key that's a 10-footer. It's either dunk or threes. You start getting that little 10-footer and start banking that, it it's just another, you know, great way to score. Yeah, Denver Jones, four of eight from the floor, one of four from three. Um, scored nine tonight, which would you take that? Five rebounds, mm -hmm. uh, an assist in 23 minutes. Solid performance from Denver Jones. Aiden Holloway, you look at it, it's like, oh, it's seven points, which is just around where everybody else was. Three of 11 from the floor, one of five from three. Like shooting wise, he's he's had a few games like this now, Daryl. And it, it kind of reminds you a little bit of, okay, well, Wendell Green would pop every now and then, and then he'd have games that looked a little bit like this. Any concern there for Aiden, or is it just uh, it's early, everybody's still figuring this thing out, and he's he's like barely 18 years old? That's the difference. You just nailed it. Wendell Green was 20 and 21 when we had those things happen. He's only 18, and I think it's just a maturation process. I think that's going to be something that just by the end of the year, uh, you know, his the whole growth process for him is going to be at such a level that that the ups and downs will will go away a little bit. And and the other thing about it, you know Holloway that I really enjoy seeing is if he's not hitting his threes, he also has the ability to put it on the floor and slash to the basket. He and and he, and he didn't sulk or pout as well. I don't know how many assists he had, but it looked to me like he made some really nice passes tonight too. Who who is this? Holloway. Holloway. When he wasn't hitting his shots, he still it looked like he was distributing the basketball. Yeah, well. five assists. Five yeah, assists. so there you go. I mean, you know, he, he wasn't hitting the shots. He didn't sulk. He didn't keep shooting. He just found other guys. Yeah, it's a good point guard. Yeah, and I mean, there's going to be a little bit of a talk about okay, how does this team respond after playing their best two halves of the season against Indiana and. It was a little sloppy at times, but all in all, they finished strong. But turnovers was one thing that I wanted to look at. I mean, they did a tremendous job, a historically good job as far as Auburn standards go, of taking care of the basketball against Indiana. Tonight, obviously not as good, but still just seven turnovers. If Auburn only turns it over seven times against the team, they're probably going to beat you. Um, with the, what were the assists? I think they were over 20 assists. Yeah, they had 19 assists, 19 to 7. You take that ratio all day long. 
Mm-hmm. And that's that's the 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 mark of two good point guards. Not all, here's the thing. That ratio may be a little bit skewed if Auburn had a point guard that when he left the game, the backup point guard came in and wasn't as seasoned or as good as Trey Donaldson is. When you've got someone like that, that's why those assist to turnover ratios will stay pretty steady. Um, again, style of play on foul differential. I mean, it is what it is. I, I, I still like, you know, 16 to nine. I just, I don't want to be a doom and gloomer, but I think at some point during the year against a bona fide SEC team, being negative seven on the foul ledger is going to get you beat. So that's one area I want to see them clean up a little bit. And I know it's a style of play. They're aggressive. That's why they get on the floor and reach and grab and get in passing lanes. But I don't know. I think at some point it's going to, it's going to bite Auburn. So I'd like to see that cleaned up before conference play. Yeah, uh, I think that's a good observation. All right, folks, go ahead and drop in the live chat. Who's your player of the game? Was it CBM? Was it Trey? Was it Dylan? Who, who was it? Because this is, you know, usually when you do these, it's, when we do these, Daryl, it's pretty obvious, but there's actually a, some argument for a few different guys. So go ahead and drop yeah. those in the live chat. I'm curious to kind of get a little bit of a debate going here. Today's show brought to you by our friends at LinkedIn Jobs. Daryl, you've used LinkedIn Jobs several times to fill, what, three or four roles for your small company. Uh, it, it's the best place to hire and find qualified candidates faster and for free. You don't want to waste a whole lot of time. And look, LinkedIn, they also just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process even easier and quicker. Are you kidding me? So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash lockdown college. That is linkedin.com slash lockdown college. Post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. We're getting a lot of folks saying Dylan Cardwell was the player of the game. Do you agree with that or do you see where they're coming from? I don't agree, but I see where they're coming from because he injected uh, some intensity, some emotion, and some instant, I don't know, it's just the, the game changed. you know. And, and he was very, very instrumental with his defense and his dunks. Holy crap. A couple yeah. of those dunks were just – so what it did is it provided juice. But I think for the whole game, if it was in a spurt, yes. But for the whole game, I would go with Donaldson or, or, or Baker Mazzara. Jesse Allison says Huntsville was the player of the game. Well, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I love it. A uh, lot yeah. of Dylan, a lot of uh, and then Chad Baker Mazar. He's my player of the game, uh, I think. And somebody earlier in the live chat said that Chad Baker Mazar is going to be my Chuma Okiki. And I, I think they're a little different. I think, I think, um, I think Okiki kind of blossomed late, and that's probably where they're going with, right? Chad baker Mazar is going to get better over the course of the season. And so I, I think there's going to be – I think there's going to be a lot to that. It just would not shock me if there were moments throughout SEC play where CBM just took over games and was the reason Auburn won two or three toss-up SEC games in the next month or two. And to me – that's exciting, especially when you would have listed all of the incoming transfers. He probably would have been third or fourth on my like impact list as far as guys coming out. I probably would have put Tim, uh, Denver Jones ahead of him, and I would have put um, I would have put uh, Cheney Johnson ahead of him as well. But I, I think you can make the argument that what Chad Baker Mazzara is doing, uh, both when he has the ball and when he doesn't has uh, have the ball, I, I think he's been a huge part a huge cog in the success early for this Auburn basketball team. Yeah, as far as the comp to Chuma, remember he was a sophomore. He was good as a freshman, but he really became who he was and became playing at a high level his sophomore year. Chad baker Mazar, I think this is his fourth or fifth year of playing college basketball. It's his fourth school. He played at Duquesne, San Diego State, a JUCO, and now Auburn. So it's not a case of him blossoming late. He's This is his fifth year. But with that comes a lot of maturity, a lot of experience, a lot of different systems. And look, I, I told you this before, I was watching Duquesne and Pitt one night three or four years ago because yeah. of my Pittsburgh, and he looked good. He looked good for Duquesne. I mean, he was a freshman. He's looked good for San Diego State. So hey, you, you got this is Pitt a perfect system for him. You mentioned Pitt. You feel good? You feel good? You no, no, no. I said you, I mentioned I mentioned Duquesne because Duquesne was like here. Here's why I said I it. People, people would be like, "Why was Daryl watching a Duquesne game?" Well, I get it. I'm yeah. just giving you a hard time. Local just city, yeah, the city, city kid. But see, he doesn't have to be that dude in this Auburn, and that may be why he flourishes more. 
under the radar, no pressure, knows his role and doesn't yeah. have to be that guy. Right. And sometimes people really, really, you know, explode like that. Yeah, and I think that's a trend for this team so far. Even when certain guys are cold or Denver Jones doesn't shoot well or Aiden Holloway has a hard time, you know, scoring points in a game, everybody still seems to know what their role is. Nobody's really trying to do too much, and that's something that I don't think we've always been able to say over the last few seasons. Mm -hmm. You know, there's been different guys, whether it was an Allen Flanagan or a Wendell Green or, you know, whoever it may be. There were guys that, kind of didn't really fit what the rest of the team was trying to do. And that hasn't really been an issue yet this season. Very underrated point. I'll compliment you, even though you took a shot at me about my, my home sitting, you know, my, my birthplace. Um, hey, I think it's really great that you love Pitt. I think it's really great that you love Arizona. <laughs> and, here's love, the deal. And, and honestly, I'm impressed how much you find a way, how often you find a way to, to bring them up. Seriously. It's impressive. It's relative. This was relative because he played against them and he played sure. in a school. But my, your point about what, what Auburn had last year was either guys that did too much. And from a fan base, you would say, could you please tone that down a little bit? Whether it was, you know, Wendell Green or Alan Flanagan, you felt like a lot of things were forced. Or let's be honest, we love him, but we'd be screaming and hollering for people to do more, i.e. Yeah. Zepp Jasper. Hey, right. we need more out of you. I think right now, if you look at this team, everybody's pretty satisfied where everyone is. You, it's kind of like everyone's hit the level watermark, right? Maybe I'd like to see maybe a little bit more from Chaney Johnson. I thought he would give – but I think that's coming. I think that's coming. But everyone else is kind of meeting expectations. The, the only guy I still want more from, and this will always be the case, is Jalen Williams. I always want more Jalen Williams on offense. Outside of that, I'm there with you, dude. I agree. Yeah. And I think Denver Jones is going to give you more. I think there was an injury issue, so I gave him a little bit of grace on that. But he I think shot if you eight would've... times, though. I mean, do you want him shooting yeah. you more than eight times? No, no, not I, on this I, team. I think, not I on think this team. A great number, and he went four of eight. You know, I, I think that's great. There's a lot of teams that have a lot of success historically in college basketball, and you'd go, man, that player went off in the NBA, but when he played for North Carolina, he only averaged 12 points. Well, that's because they were so balanced, and they all had a role. This team. How's that DNA right now? It really does. Mm -hmm. I'm with you, dude. I'm with you. Even Santa Claus. Santa, look, Santa's saying, yeah, he agrees. I think the Santa Claus edition, which was a late edition, by the way, a little peek yeah. behind the curtain, that was a late edition, and I think it was a good one. I think it yeah. was a good one. Anybody else tonight that that we, we need to discuss? Uh, Ten minutes total for Chris Moore. Is, is that interesting at all to you? It was, let me say this, it was a productive 10 minutes. He looked like he was efficient. I think he only had four points. Is that true? Four or six, maybe? But they uh, were, they were uh, six points. Six points, but six points in 10 minutes is efficient. From Chris Moore. Like yeah, it. you take that. Yeah. yeah. And he really scored, he scored when Auburn was struggling to score early. Chris Moore was finding the basket. So again, it's not only that you score, it's when you score. And he, he was very efficient. I, I loved his game tonight. I think he did yeah. the little things. He brought his hard hat. Yes. Mm -hmm. Anybody else that that we need to to mention that that we haven't really had him? Yes. Chance? Katie Johnson. Is that where you're going? Katie Johnson. I was going to go with Katie. Now. Yes. Injected some life and some energy defensively. Got on the floor. Made a beautiful pass from his butt. Uh, hit a couple of shots. Hit a three. Drove to the basket. Hit some free throws. He injected life. They. I mean, it was just a completely different energy level when he came in. And I also liked Leor Berman's game off the bench with a quiet five points, but he had a couple rebounds, hit a three. He he contributed. I, for I still what don't his role. so much. Is he going to play? Well, how many minutes did he play? play? How many minutes did he play? Six. Nine. Wow, that's a little bit more than I thought. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. Okay. Well, nine five points in nine minutes, but I mean, Chris Moore only played one more minute than him, and that's weird. And he right? starts. And he starts. Yeah. If that doesn't give you an idea of what the bench is for this team, there it is. Good point. Good point. Yeah. Good point. Um, several people asking, and I've kind of put it off because I don't know the answer. Uh, Janai Broom's technical uh, yes. broadcast, they, they were just kind of saying, hey, they didn't know either. Did you I see know exactly anything? what happened. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Wilson. So Auburn has this thing when somebody dunks where they tap the top of their head. I don't know what it means, but I see them. the whole bench was doing it. 
Janai Broom did it and pointed to Chaney Johnson, and the official mistook that for Janai Broom pointing to a Asheville player. Oh, patting his pointing. head. Yeah. Gotcha. Right. And so it wasn't. He was pointing to – that's something they do. The bench was doing it. When you go back and look at the footage, the whole bench they need to was not doing do it. It's just again. a little thing they do. So the referee obviously just misconstrued that and called the technical. But you know yeah. what? Can't the do dude that. missed both free throws. So you know what I say, brother. Ball don't lie. He missed both of them. That kid was annoying, too, for their team. I, he's one of those dudes you just want to – he just annoys the crap out of you. Uh, good yeah. player. Drew, uh, I think his name was Pember. Is that his name? Yeah. Still lost by good. 25, but yeah. Yeah, good player. Good player. Yeah. Good player. Got, got hurt and went to the locker room for a little bit. And when that happened, I mean, Auburn really went on a big run after that. I want to make sure I get his name right after. Yeah, Pember. I nailed it. Wow. After what happened – on the football broadcast, I'm glad I got that right. So, Pember. You, you probably watched him a few years ago when he was playing against Pitt. No, he played for Tennessee. So, yeah, he played for Tennessee, and uh, he's just annoying. He's like those typical Tennessee players that you want to punch. Got it. You know, those two dudes that, you know, I can't even think of the, the, the international players. But anyway, yeah, and Auburn did a really good job in the second half a little bit. You know, you're going to give him his points after they're, you're up 32. You're really not concerned. With dude getting his 20 or whatever, let him have him. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We'll go for a few more minutes, guys. Drop your takes yeah. or your questions in the live chat and we'll respond to them to wrap up today's show. Is so our boy in here, War Eagle, Wyoming, in here? Asking I haven't any seen questions? Him. I haven't seen That's him. That's disappointing. That's really disappointing. Um, yeah. A lot of people are probably watching Survivor. I'm just going to be honest with you. What? A lot of people are watching Survivor, the best show on the television. What the isn't that show been on TV for like 25 years? Season 45. It's the reason it's it's the best show on television. No, Nobody tell me what happened if you watched it. Nobody tell me. I'm about to go watch it after this. Um, so USC coming into town on Sunday. I'll right. just talk about Bronny James. There's player on there's players on this team that are better than Bronny James, right? And Boogie but, Ellis. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, he's pretty good, right? And yeah. so this USC team is solid. This USC team beat Auburn a year ago. And you got to think, you got to think Auburn has the chance to make a statement on Sunday. They had a chance a few times to make a statement. I think against Baylor and against um, and against App State. I think that would have been uh, been a big one on the road. And they haven't been able to really do that. Can Auburn pick up their biggest win of the season or their win against the best team that they've played this season outside of Baylor, Daryl, on Sunday? Yeah, I think I think USC is right there a little bit better than Indiana, but remember this game is a home game. Neville is going to be lit. And I'll say this, I fully expect Auburn to win this game comfortably. And I think I think Auburn's oh. going to play really, really yes, I think Auburn's going to play at a high level. I think the crowd's going to be electric. And I think that I mean USC's got some good players, they really do, but USC does not have the depth that Auburn has. They cannot go seven, eight deep even, as far as balance scoring. So I think Auburn's depth, being back at Neville after a while, the electricity of a Sunday afternoon and the USC, it's going to be and USC beating Auburn last year. I think Auburn's going to have a really peak performance, and I see them winning and winning, you know, comfortably. Mm -hmm. What would you, if you are friends at FanDuel Sportsbook, yeah. what would you set the line at? Seven and a half. And would you take Auburn to cover? Yes. How about that? How about I that? Would. We, do we know what the we don't know what the line is yet, do we? They probably won't drop that till Sunday or Saturday night. So. Saturday night, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, cool. Good deal. Good deal. A lot of people wanting uh, KD to uh, to lock down Bronny. I'm with you. That'd be great. That would be awesome. Well, for yeah. Yeah, I mean, it depends on rotations and that kind of thing. I don't know if he starts. Does Bronny James start? I thought he comes off the bench until he gets acclimated to the minutes played and all that. I don't know. Against Long Beach State, he came off the bench. Now, that may just be a, you know, get him back in the game, get him used to it. He may start Sunday. I don't mm -hmm. know. It's going to be a it's gonna be a fun, fun environment. And I, I, just, I just have this feeling Auburn's going to shoot it well. They're going to play well. The building's going to be, you know, on fire and, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good a good uh, advertisement for Auburn basketball with the nation looking at them a little bit.
I think so. And hopefully it's a good advertisement for Auburn. A lot of, a uh, lot of big recruits will be there this weekend. So, all right. Um, other things happening on locked on Auburn. We just did our sec wide sec schedule reaction show. So be sure to check that out. If you're watching on YouTube, it's already up. If you're listening on audio, it's already up. And then of course we'll have our normal scheduled show where we talk a ton of Cruton, um, that goes up with Brian Smith on Thursday. Daryl, how can people check out everything that you've got going on right now? You can check me out Friday with you on Locked on Auburn. Uh, you can check me out on X, DAP 6410, Monday mornings and Tuesday afternoons on the Auburn Network. Yes, and if you want more college basketball talk, check out our friends at Locked on College Basketball. Find all my written work at auburndaily.com. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel, and we will see you tomorrow. This has been Locked on Auburn.